hello and welcome to this casted game played on Black Forest Duel between Labyrinth Lover playing as the 27Y Guards Motostroki Division and he's up against Crispy playing as his signature 3rd Armoured Division. I always see him on this division. And yeah, we're on Black Forest Duel so we'll go through the decks and then we'll cast the deployments. So this is Labyrinth Lover's deck for the game that we're about to see. And I've noticed some very interesting oddities here, but we'll go into it tab by tab and we'll see what we can see. So if this is a 1v1 deck, four cards of supply is, is a lot. I usually run three and I find that sufficient. But when we get to the RT tab, I think maybe we'll understand why there's four. And yeah, in terms of your CV choices, they're all two CVs. So, I mean, this is 55 points, uh, which is actually really cheap. Um, but yeah, I can understand the need to, to get the nice normal wield 100 points. It's got self-defense and it's crucial. It's got smoke. You see the smoke canisters on the back. Uh, if you want a bit more armor, you can get this. To be honest, I don't really rate it at all because, um, you want the CV to be not in combat, right? Because it'll die. So yeah, I think he's made the correct decision here. But if you want cheap CVs, this is your best bet. On the inf tab, yeah, conquers M. Uh, definitely worth the extra money compared to the Conkers, although you do get less availability because yeah, it's 23 AP with 55% accuracy. So yeah, it's really good. I like it a lot. So Perry RPO, yeah, fair enough. I didn't realize that they only come in the Gaz or the MTLB. The MTLB is too slow, so I think he's made the correct choice there. And then we've got two upvetted Moto Strokey RPG 26s. Sorry, 27s. Uh, <laughs> the 26s do not come in that. And so he's brought two with the BMP2. I agree with that because the, the AG, the grenade launcher, isn't that good. It's just not that good. And I'm pretty sure you lose your smoke for it. No, hang on, the smoke's there. You don't lose your smoke for it. But the grenade launcher just ain't that good. Um, right now, the damage it does is, is like not that much higher than the PKT. So yeah, I think it's best to bring the the two regular. And yeah, BMP3, you want this. I'm surprised by his decision to keep it at one at Nova. I guess he wants lots of BMP3s, but do you find yourself buying eight in a game? Maybe you do. They're very expensive though, 90 points. And then yeah, we got Gaz Motostroke RPG 27 and Gaz Motostroke RPG 26. Uh, I do agree with having some wheeled fast guys um you might want to consider the btr 80 it's really useful for like sneaking around the sides fire support you'll still have your gas for your wield stuff uh yeah it can be really useful so it's worth trying it's worth trying because you don't have any btr btr 60s are, are good for it but it's got smokes it, it's sort of like a lux <laughs> you can sort of see it like a lux um and yeah if you get one around the side it's really good at bothering people so it's really useful to have that uh and then motostrokey metis i think he br brings it at one vet i don't know if i just did that it's either or if you find yourself bringing a lot of them uh if, what i would do is start with it up vetted and then if you find that you're bringing more than five in a game down vet it and then that's a good way you know and if you find that you're finishing 40 minute games with things then you can start up vetting them and yeah, we've got standard CV here. Looks like the yeah, so you've either got the four man one or the four man one, and he's gone for the the one with the better rocket launcher, which is perfectly reasonable. You could get the one with the shock, but I don't. I mean, if you get into shock territory with your CV infantry, something has gone hilariously wrong. So, I think the better rocket launcher is the better choice. Artillery. If this is one v one, you're gonna have a really really hard time bringing all this without dying really hard time because um you know that's 400 800 uh 1100 1400 points worth of artillery i think it's a bit much honestly i don't rate the gvoz Dika. i think it's really bad um if your micro is good enough the d30 does the same thing and it's cheaper uh and yeah you, but you have to move it around with the mtlb to avoid counter battery I would not bring this many grads. I think one card of grad is fine. And then you can get rid of a card of supply. Uh, and I would probably get rid of those. I would probably 
but the laser of cat searing because this thing is actually really good at killing uh, conquers team stuff like that or you can bring the regular cat sears uh, but yeah I don't rate the Vosdika at all I think it's awful tank tab so yeah two CV tanks and then the T-80BVs I like this idea behind bringing one at uh, at Novet so that you've you've got a mix. So you, you bring the good ones and then when you run out you bring the bad ones. I do like that idea. It's you know, something I see Integer do a lot and it's it's pretty big brain so I can understand that. The Sprut, yeah, it's uh, if you can get it into a good spot, 23 AP really messes people up. So I can understand it. I personally always seem to lose it when I use it but... <laughs> Uh, it can be really, really effective. And he's bringing it in the gas, so it's fast off the mark. Uh, that is doable. The problem is that it can be counter battery quite easily, whereas if it's in the MTOB, it can't. But yeah, having it fast off at the start is actually really, really useful because you can get it into some better positions at the start. So I can understand the gas. Recon tab. Um, B oh, so he has got BTR 80s, so he probably doesn't need it here if he's got BTR 80s. In this tab, Spetsraz Vedka and BTR 80s, these are really good at the start because they've got that airborne forward deployment, the GSR. Um, and yeah, they've got RPGs and the BTR 80s, great fire support, it's got smoke. Whereas Vedka BMP2 is really, really, really good. You should definitely be bringing that. You should definitely be bringing that. In fact, I would even say bring two cards of it, uh, especially as it's upvetted. Oh, you can't. Wait, hang on. What? Motorized Rosvedka. Oh, it's this card. <laughs> yeah, so you can't bring two cards of it. Um, so yeah, that's really good. Upvetting it is is probably a good idea, actually, because of how good these are. Um, and then, yeah, he's bringing this in the UAZ. Don't agree with that. The KPV has KPV. It's quite expensive now, actually, at 30 points, so maybe there's a case to be made for not bringing it. But the idea is that this also has its own optics. So you get like double the recon, but to be honest, considering this is 30 points, I can understand why you've not brought that. AA tab, no tor. So that the tor, I feel like it doesn't work properly. Honestly, I feel like it's bugged. But I, sometimes it hits, but I can understand bringing two cards of Tonguska because yeah, sometimes it just seems to miss constantly. Uh, the ZU thing, I don't really think is very good at all. <laughs> but yeah, you definitely need some Iglas. Definitely need some Iglis. Heli tab, uh, you want the AA Halo, especially as we have 49 AP there. I don't know if that's because of something I did. Oh yeah, it is because I removed an artillery. The AA Halo is really useful for openers and stuff because it's got the Iglis, so I really like that. And out of these two, he's gone for the one with the uh, more of the smaller rockets and four more Cocons. Yeah, fair enough. And then no air. I'm really surprised by this. So, y you can go limited air, but you'll notice that like these are like one point slots, so you might as well fill them. And um, what I would do is I would get the MiG-29 AA, and I would get... Um... Right, so so all th the three things that you really want are the MiG-29 for air, su air superiority, MiG-27M for bombing, and the SU-17M4 for the anti-tank, like, and that would only cost you four points. And it adds so much. It adds so much to your deck if you had that. So I would, like, go easy on the artillery. And, um, you know, do you need three cards of infantry recon? Probably not, right? I mean, <laughs> do you find yourself bringing these? Um, so you could get rid of that. And then and then you could get these. They're just so useful. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, you, if you go easy on the artillery, then you don't need four cards of supply. And then you've got loads of room to do loads more stuff. You can... Um, obviously, yeah, you wouldn't be bringing the artillery. I would get rid of this as well. I don't think it's very good. I think the Strela 10 M3 is pretty decent, considering... Well, I mean, okay, it's basically a Tunguska without the gun now, actually. Uh, <laughs> looking at those missiles, yeah, it's basically a Tunguska without the gun. So actually, maybe, maybe the Tunguska is better quite expensive though so yeah that's how i'd change it i know i've been a bit higgledy piggledy here um but yeah i would probably build it a bit more like that and i get rid of this and then you've got two points for you you can bring your recon if you want to be honest i think these are really useful and sometimes you could really use the recon helicopter i seem to be a bit bugged here yeah i'm bugged even though that's there we go that's solid so i would probably build it a bit more like that um because, yeah, he's already got the BTR-80s, so we 
declined on that account. Um, Saperia Pio, yeah, he's got Saperia Pio. And then how many CVs are there? Four, six, eight. Yeah, there's plenty of CVs. So that's how I would build it. Um, but obviously it's it's your deck, right? So where is it? That's your, your screenshot moment. So the other guy's deck, Crispy, he's playing third armoured. I see him. I, I've never seen him on anything else. So this is interesting. He plays a lot of third armoured. Third armoured, not as good as it used to be, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, so in the Logi tab, he's got two cards of supply for all these tanks. So I don't think that's a good idea. Well, actually, there actually aren't that many tanks here. Um, but I would prefer three cards of supply, if you can. Here, Fire Team 84 in the Humvee, that's a good idea. Regular Engineers instead of Engineers Flash, that's an interesting decision. I prefer the Flash, but uh, it's got only got five men, and you've got to micro it a lot to get the value out of it. But in the forests, I feel like the Flash is just so much better. But yeah, these can work because they're ten men. It's twice the manpower, so the, the DPS is not bad. Um, and yeah, you need big squads when you play in this division because you don't get mech rifles anymore. Engineer's Dragon are a must-have. Must-have, he's bringing them in the truck, fair enough. Aero rifles, another big squad. Um, yeah, fair enough. And then he's bringing Fire Team Law, Fire Team Dragon in the two different Bradleys. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Do you not find you're running out of infantry? I mean, it depends how you play. I play extremely aggressively. This is too much. Um, you don't need all this. I would I would get rid of that and bring that. This thing is actually pretty good now. Particularly against tanks and stuff. It's actually really good. Uh, but yeah, you would need more than two cards of supply with all this artillery anyway. And yeah, you need mortars for smoke. Tanks, so M1A1s, HAs, HA, HA, M1A1, M1A1, HA. So that's fair enough. Um... I like to bring more M1A ones and just save the HAs for later once I've got air superiority etc because if they die then it's very sad. But yeah you can buy four of these and yeah to be honest it's probably more than enough tanks if you think about how many points are here that's like two minutes income, four minutes income, uh, eight minutes income, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, you know it's about sixteen minutes income on tanks so I think there's plenty of tanks. Scouts in the, in the HB yeah I agree with that. I don't know about this. Black Hawk Scouts, are you getting utility out of that? Is that actually working for you? Uh, the Fist V, you put it with your tanks, I guess. Uh, I mean, it's a very expensive... Uh, in terms of AP, you're losing AP for... You know, you're losing 3 AP for this. Do you not find that you can just put this with your tanks and that has good optics? In so, I mean, it's not, it's not very good optics, right? But it's good optics. Do you find that... And also, this is slower than the tanks... Because the tanks all got faster, so that's 68, that's 68, right? And uh, and this is 59, so even if you are keeping it with your tanks, it doesn't really work. So you got to use this, because it's 63, and you've, you've got that anyway. I don't know, I think this is a bit redundant, having both of these in here. AA tab, no stingers. Do you really find you need eight chaparrals? I would get some stingers, because you can bring them closer to the front line. That's the point, because they're exceptional stealth, you can bring them closer to the front line. Heli tab, one Apache, Cobra, Tow Cobra, that's fairly standard. And then, yeah, two cards at. Whoa, okay. So, no bombers, no bombers. Interesting. Um, yeah, you really want air superiority, fair enough. Uh, to be honest, your bomber options aren't particularly great. But honestly, I would bring this. Uh, because it's. You just use it to bomb exposed infantry. Uh, if somebody's doing a breakthrough, you just. You know, he's running forwards with one infantry, you can see it, you can't do anything about it. That's why you bring this, and so you just bomb it. 175 points, do you really need 8 fires? So that is how I would build that deck. So starting with Crispy's deployment, uh, we've got some aero rifles and some scouts and Blackhawks going over to Charlie, just a couple of units there, uh, backed up by a Cobra. And then we've got aero rifles going to the front of Bravo, just to stop anybody from getting in there. And some scouts and Blackhawks going to uh, this position here, just outside of Foxtrot. Behind that, an M150, these are a pretty good screen, uh, like a light screening unit, 35 points for a tow. Sadly, the availability has come down a lot, but I can understand why, because they're quite uh, spammable. It's very easy to cover the whole map from left to right with these, so that's going to there. And behind that, we've got the main focus of the push. So, tow Cobra going to there, backed up by two Pivads and an M1A1 CV. 
which is going to Delta, and then an M1A1HA going to just outside Foxtrot. So it's an interesting decision to buy the HA so early. Uh, two pivads is not going to save you basically from the AT plane. But as we know from the deck reviews, Labyrinth Lover hasn't brought the AT plane. So he's really going to struggle against these tanks. Going over to Red's deployment. Got some uh, Spetsraz Vedka. I thought they were in... Um... That's interesting. I thought they were in BTR 80s, but they're clearly not. <laughs> so that's an error on my part. So he's going to the church because religious people could see further than atheists. And I could have sworn they were in the BTR 80. So that's my fault. And then Spetsar Resvedka going to here. You can get to here. And most tries Resvedka with the, the infamous, very difficult to deal with Resvedka BMP2 due to its mediocre stealth. You don't see it and then it shoots a Conkers at you and then it kills you with its auto cannon. And that's just going to here. And it's not actually going to be unloading the infantry at the start. So we got a Conkers M and a Sprut B. Conkers M going to this building, Sprut going to here. And that's not got an unload path either. If you press Y, you can... Yeah, I don't think he knows about that. So instead of pressing F and then U, which is what's been done here, you can press Y and it will do unload at position automatically. You don't have to do F and then U. Uh, it's not a big deal, but it does save you a little bit of time. So yeah, Tunguska, TABVK. So very much defending Foxtrot, completely ignoring Charlie. And yeah, two Igglers going to the town. Uh, two Saperia Pio is going to the town. Conquers M going to the church because, yeah, it can shoot further. Although you do have a problem if somebody decides to come down here. And a BTR 80 going to Alpha. So we'll cast the game and I'll do it from this perspective. Right, so they're off. And I'd like to take the time to thank the generous channel joiners, of which Labyrinth Lover is one of them. They get the names on the screen. They get the videos up to a week early. They get members-only videos, and they get access to the Strategic Reserve, which is basically more videos that are, aren't scheduled for a date to come out yet. So in total, there's like 20-something uh, backup and members-only videos that you get access to for that one-month subscription. And yeah, the lowest level, one-month subscription, is worth 2,000 views, so you can subscribe for one month and then cancel it, get access to all those videos one new members only video comes out a week so if i guess if you wait there'll be more of them um and then yeah then you can use your ad block for the next five years without feeling bad um so the the blackhawks are getting in there and yeah he's going a bit deeper with this one's just edited that uh there's there's no contesting charlie everybody's going for foxtrot well crispy's got a couple guys here and I'll be interested to see this attack, because the HA, usually, you try and snipe that with a bomber. But, uh, Labyrinth has decided to bring zero air. Not even that that pretty good AT plane you get, as 27Y, the SU-22 M4, something like that. So, dealing with the HA is going to be exceptionally difficult, because there is no, uh, air. <laughs> But from the deck review, we know that he's got, like, what, four grads? We'll see if it works out. And then, yeah, the BRDM2s are just going to defensive places. To be honest, they don't have to be that far back. If you're worried about somebody coming through here, you can put him there. And if you're worried about somebody coming down here, it can be all the way over there. Don't have to be that far back. And the Blackhawks are not on auto sell. Actually, they are. It says on here. But it's not selling. Okay, there you go. It's selling. And he's buying another one. We've got Bradley's coming in now with a mortar for smoke. So this is going to be an interesting first combat on Foxtrot. The Tow Cobra. So usually you'd want to snipe the Tow Cobra with a plane, right? Like the MiG-27 bomber that 27Y gets. But without air, you basically just... You're making a lot of sacrifices for uh, for nothing. I mean, if it's for the memes, I get it. But the, the amount of sacrifice you're making... Um, for what you're getting out of it. Like for 4 AP, you could get MiG 29s. You can get the AT plane and you can get the HE plane, which doubles as a Helo Hunter. So it's uh, it's well worth your time because, um, yeah, this HA is going to be tough to deal with. The CV hasn't been repathed, and so Labyrinth's on a plus two. And there's no CV been purchased for Charlie. More Blackhawks coming in. The advantage of the Blackhawk transports, right? There's a big cost up front. There you go. Must CV being deployed there. But uh, when they sell, 
uh, basically, you get the money back faster off the Blackhawks. Um, although it looks like he... I don't know, because it says auto sells on, but they're not selling. It's taken ages before they sell. Um, so you actually get the money back faster. So the Conquer's M should deal with that, and down it goes. Uh, so yeah, typically you'd want your infantry recon up to here, because you've got to watch out for that house. And then this artillery, you would hope, would be used to go kill that Conquer's M. Both of them. Only one of them is being used to do that. That's a shame. And yeah, it's rare to see so much artillery investment at the start. This Tunguska has just sort of been left behind. It's just not been pathed. So that's a shame. And I'll be interested in seeing how useful this is. I think the answer is going to be not very. And yeah, the issue with seeding the Charlie without a fight uh, is that the enemy can come down this road and get in uh, Alpha pretty easily. Pretty easily. He can also send guys through the forest of this road and shoot your reinforcements, which is frustrating to deal with. Just a shame that the... Uh, it looks like this is actually... No, this is going somewhere else. So if he'd used both of these, it might have killed it, but instead it's just going to move. Uh, there is a bit of RNG on these howitzers, you know. So T80 BVK engaging the pivots. No reaction as of yet. No, it's reversing. And this is another thing where um, Crispy's got no ground attack. He's just got four cards of fighters. So there's going to be no air to kill any of these tanks, um, which is uh, interesting to say the least. So the tick's going to stop in a second once this muck gets there, but Labyrinth's on a, a, a cozy plus 260, 270 by the time that gets there. And that puts the onus on Crispy to attack. And he's going to be attacking into lots of conquers, lots of uh, BMP2s, etc. So he's bought them. He's bought three howitzers, which I really don't agree with, because um, basically you get diminishing returns. And this has been forgotten. This is back there. One howitzer is really useful. Two is is useful, and three is, you know, what do you use them for? You try and get all three to f target tanks, I guess. Uh, it's just a waste of points, really. And all this time your opponent's buying frontline stuff, so when it finally comes for you to push, you're going to be pushing into this wall of BMP2s. Yep, yeah, it's always worth, I mean, one of these for, for over here would be useful, because, yeah, once they get to here, if somebody sneaks somebody through here, you can cut the reinforcements, and I encourage you to do that if you're playing the game, get them all the way around there. Um, so yeah, just leaving a Sapere Apio there can work, but what if it's a vehicle, right? So the, the better idea is to... Um, yeah, okay, so so you, you use the Saperi RPO to take this. The key to Foxtrot is this forest next to Foxtrot. I always say this and then I never really do it. Because if Blue can get guys up to here, you can see the CVs, right? He can deal with this at close range. Um, although, to be honest, I'm, these three howitzers, they've really not paid for themselves. And then you can cut the reinforcements. So it's really worth taking this forest. And for Red, it's the same thing. If Red wants to take this zone, I mean, he's already got it. If blue pushes in, he'll get to here, right? And if you've got a recon here, you're going to see that. You're going to see it. So it's always worth red to take this as well. So this could be moved up. And I guess this could be moved up. But I don't really agree with this. You want a BRDM2 or, or uh, that Resved could be MP2 there would be really, really useful. And then you can deploy the infantry and that could go through this forest. But both sides quite content to just uh, build up. And this is just a huge artillery investment. Um, but yeah, Crispy's the one that has to do the pushing right now. And I would love to see some aero rifles just come down here. Kill some reinforcements. you got to watch out for the helicopters. Um, more aero rifles being purchased. Just flooding, uh, flooding Bravo there. And um, yeah, we got some most stroky metas coming in here. It's just if you buy artillery, you want it to be firing all the time. And now, now he spent a thousand points on howitzers. Which is just too much, really, because he they're not even shooting. Like He's hes accomplished nothing with those 1,000 points so far. And I don't think it's going to pay for itself. So, is this smoke? It is not. It is HE. Um, I was sort of hoping that he'd smoke and go. But he's got this problem where you got something there, you got something here. And so you're going to get shot at from three sides. This side, this side, and this side. And here we go. How it says, right, so he's going to hit all building, three buildings simultaneously. Which will, yeah, I don't think it'll accomplish a whole lot. Because, um, yeah, he doesn't have any targets, so he's just blind firing. But it's better than not using it. You see the BMP2s moving there, and, yeah, the mortars, they, they don't really do a whole lot. 
Um, they, they do a little bit, but not a whole lot. Uh, artillery, not as strong as it is in Red Dragon or in SD2. So, four howitzers opening up here. And, um, you know, they'll do a bit of damage to this Spetsnaz, but there's actually nobody in this one. And the, the tank's probably going to be okay. It might take one HP damage. And this is a thousand points worth of RT. It just doesn't feel worth it, really. It just doesn't feel worth it. And, yeah, all, all the enemy does is just move. And, you know, one HP has been... Uh, damage has been accomplished across a thousand points of artillery. So, it would have been better to build more front line. Take this far. Well, you, you need to deal with this, because it's just impossible to push as long as that's up. But, yeah, he's forced the enemy back out of the zone a little bit. Uh, this CV tank could be brought over to here. And, yeah, you might as well get it firing. But, to be honest, what you need to do is kill this with the horses, right? But... You can always smoke it off, like smoke off this, smoke off this, smoke off this, and just walk in. Um, so Acacia is being purchased here. Backup CV, I guess. Oh, no, I see. The CV is next to the Acacia to upvet it. This is really strange. The deck that he sent me to review is completely different to the deck that... <laughs> to the deck that he's using. <laughs> because... Um... He had Gvozdikas in that, right? Whereas this isn't a cat's here. <laughs> Interesting. So I reviewed the wrong deck. Interesting. So maybe he does have some planes. But no, it just seems like small changes. The Gvozdikas have been replaced with the cat's here's, And he's using a CV to buff them up. To be honest, if you invested this much, this many points in artillery, you should probably do the same. Be interesting to see that. So the grads are out. Oh, I see. So he's got a card of Acacias, a card of Gvozdikas, and a card of Grads. Honestly, um, I think it's too much artillery from both players. Uh, as you can see, it's not really accomplishing much. But here we go. Blue's attacking now. And imagine if instead of buying Arty, he had four extra M1A1s. Honestly. Because <laughs> that's, uh, that's what it comes down to. And because like, this is still alive, so they've not really done their job. They had one job. And this should really switch to smoke now. Make a smoke there so you, you can get the CV in. That guy's going to die and then um, I guess you got the Fist V behind that. And yeah, this guy's still alive. Uh, and the Howitzers are just going to let him... Howitzers are just shooting nothing much really. And the HA Abrams got side shot by Conker's M and destroyed. And that's really sad. That's like 310 points just gone. And, and the RT, you know, the RT should have gone for this, really. Um, you at least smoke it off. Because, yeah, he's just sort of walking forwards and dying. Uh, you hate to see it. Oh, this is really not accomplishing much. Getting a little bit of damage off on that T-80. It's mainly about the suppression. Hitting the sprut. There we go, he smoked it. He smoked it. And the Toe Cobra should finish it off. So there you go, that was good smoke, but... Wow, the, the ZU is actually doing something. He's got to get out of there. He waited too long and now he's dead. So I guess it is good defensively. Um, still, though, I think the opportunity cost is quite high. I mean, the Eagle does the same job if you send up to there. So there we go. He smoked the CV. But he lost the HA. And now he's lost all his recon. There's no infantry here. Really, if you're attacking this point, you need to either take all this or take all this. Cause you're getting shot from two sides. And it's just very difficult to deal with. But yeah, I'd love to see the grads opening up now. Those two grads. Just grad the smoke. You know he's in there. Uh, that's what the, that's what they're for. And yeah, you know, just taking too many ATGM hits. That guy actually survives that. Conker's out of ammo. Um, grads still not, still not opening up. I'd love to see some grads on that M1A1. And that HA is probably going to get side shot again if he's not careful. Oh, it does hit that BMP2, though. He needs some recon with it, but the Fist Vs he sent out ahead of it instead of instead of with it. But yeah, that TAE BBK... Yeah, that's <laughs> that's not a fight you want to fight. This thing costs a lot of points. It's got a, it's got 22 pen because of its depleted uranium. Just like the Challenger, which uses depleted uranium, and it has 20 pen. One of them. And the Sprut B gets a side shot on another HA Abrams. Um... And, you know, this thing, it has uh, 23 pen. But he's capped the zone, so he's on a plus two. Um, Abrams being sent there? Why? Don't you want him over here? 
And he's still just RTing nothing much instead of dealing with these problems. Like, he knows there's BMP2 here because it opened up on him. This guy's going to get shot now. He's reversing. He's got his low cohesion. Um, he's routed. <laughs> and now he's going to get shot by the Sprut. And he's taking a lot of damage. And because he's routed, uh, now he's yeah, now he's just freaking out. I think he's going to die. Uh, I'm not sure what the hell's going on there. Um, still no grads, but I guess they're a bit moot now. And the Sprut kills another tank. So... Really sad push. <laughs> really sad push. He bought all these howitzers and they've accomplished really just nothing. While the stationary guns have taken out all your units. Um, and then Labyrinth, he's got the spare. The spare BTR because he bought them for the Acacias. All this artillery just not doing anything. Um, but yeah, the Zed, I mean, he just he lost that to the last one. So you'd think he wouldn't, you know, he lost the last one to that, right, and so you'd think he wouldn't do that again. Um, so that'll stop the tick, and Labyrinth will still be winning. To be honest, if you've got all these grads, it's worth attacking up here, because you're the infantry division, so you should have more infantry than the armored division. And it's it's always worth holding these roads at the start. And then you just come up here with some BMP2s and stuff, and you attack with your grads. You just get a recon heli. Oh, well, I guess you don't have a recon heli, because you haven't brought it, but... Um, yeah, so you're going to have to find some way of reconning this, maybe a regular helicopter. And then you find them, you grad them, and then you go in as soon as the grads land, preferably as, uh, while the grads are landing, preferably. And yeah, the Sprut has, uh, <laughs> has killed a HA, this killed a HA. Um, Crispy building up for an attack over here now, giving up on that. It's a shame, you know, you get all these howitzers and I don't really know what they're going for. You've got MLRS on third, haven't you? The M270. That'd be a much... If you want to do a saturation attack like this, I think the M270 would be a better idea. Because Deka's not firing. You know, if you've got RT that's not firing, just put it on fire at will. Here we go, grads. Okay, so he's just going for that. Um, typically, you want, you want to grad with a purpose, right? Uh, either to stop an enemy attack or to start your own attack. That's when you want to grad. So, like, when this was here, that would be great grads timing. So, grads firing. Uh, might be worth sending the CV back to those those grads. And you see that, you know, so that's two grads. So that's 420 points. And it's, uh, it's not really doing anything. It's done one damage so far. Imagine if instead he gradded, like, here, and then interrupted it. So the, the M1A ones are going in without infantry support, and now the smoke's gone. Conquers M, doesn't get the hit, but now the smoke's gone, and so if they don't get a supply, which is not, there's not a single supply on the field here, uh, it's going to be very difficult. So artillery hitting, uh, hitting blindly instead of going for the buildings, and he doesn't see anything because he's not got the recon, so the tanks are just getting shot by the metis. And, um, yeah, it's not looking up. So that guy goes down, and the next tank's probably going to die. You need infantry for these pushes and recon. Um, and the howitzers are just not shooting the right targets. Right, he's not going for where the enemies are, and the Tunguska takes out that helicopter. Uh, Labyrinth's doing a good job of just letting his enemy feed. <laughs> There's no, to be honest, attacking here at this point would be a, a waste of time. Just, uh, just let your enemy. Uh, if your enemy's gonna sacrifice himself like this, it's best to just let him do it. And this RPG-27 should be here. Move that up, and then that can shoot this. Uh, but Demetis gets it, sending tanks into buildings. Uh, the arrow rifles are going to the same place the Cobra was when the Cobra died. So you should have seen that coming, really. So they're gonna die. Conquer's M finally went down. Like, if you've got all these howitzers, so surely you wanna, you, you really wanna take out that church tower before you attack, because you know there's gonna be a guy in there. Uh, if it's not an ATGM, it's gonna be a recon. So you need to take that out first, really, because it's just giving so much power to the enemy. And the smoke came in sort of like after everybody was dead. Now he's got this stuff, and I'm not sure where it's going. Uh, the HACV has been deployed. There's another CV coming. 
And when you attack this town, you want to have uh, you want to have sent an arrow rifles around to here, so that when he resupplies, you kill them all. Although it looks like they're going this way. So the arrow rifles, they're not really making it. Uh, the HA gets the BMP two, but like this push didn't really go anywhere. And um, yeah, could use some recon. Right, so get recon up to here. That would be so useful. Grad's opening. Up. Oh, there go. So there's nobody there. Uh, <laughs> but fair enough, really. The uh, thing you can do with the grads is that you press T to attack position, and then you press return fire. Um, and you, so you just put it in a field, or uh, whatever, you think the tank's coming this way, you put it there, press return fire, and then it doesn't launch the salvo until you release return fire, but it is fully aimed, so it will be immediate. So you can use it sort of like a counter, like a landmine. Yeah, the howitzers are just sort of shooting nothing. Like, when your enemy shoots you from a position, you want to shoot that back. So he saw loads of mess shooting from here, he should have shot that. Um, and yeah, this guy's reversing. Um, you sure third gets the MLRS, you know, it'd be so much more useful for these saturation attacks. Because yeah, the, the Hobbit says they're not... Like, does he even see that? You need more recon if you're going to do this as well. Um find targets like the fact that he's got four hoitzers and a mortar and this guy was allowed to survive and this guy was allowed to survive is um is a big shame so these guys are running out of ammo and there's not a single supply on the field for blue red's doing a good job keeping his guys supplied like he's got the supply back here needs to sell these really but it takes time to there you go it takes time to check this guy needs healing he got some stuff there and yeah, if you click in the top left, click your unit, click Y and click on the map, he will go to the position and unload, as opposed to staying like this. And uh, yeah, it can be useful to um, bring him in the MTLB, because then you can reposition them to stop being shot at by the artillery. So, Crispy building up for his next attack, and this time he's brought the infantry. So he's got infantry now, but he's splitting them, so I don't really know where they're going. Uh, to be honest, attacking the town as third is going to be hard anyway. Your advantage is here, but in attacking this, you need to take this forest, because otherwise you're just advancing into three sides and you're getting shot. Which is exactly what happened in that previous push. Uh, there was an M150 set up here, and it made it all the way down here, and then got shot by a BRDM2, I guess. They do have the ability to destroy light armor. And yeah, he's just blind firing, and it's not... You know, the enemy's just moved, so it's not really doing anything. He's bought some supply now for these howitzers. You should probably bunch them up and get a CV with them so they can fire faster. Especially if you've got four howitzers. Right, and now Labyrinth's counter-attacking. He's got lots and lots of things now. He's taken lots and lots of good trades. So he's got the BMP2s. And yeah, first job when you're taking this zone is to take these outside houses. And then you start pushing in here slowly. But the problem you've got is that you'll be shot in the side by these guys. Uh, this is obviously not in a good spot. Could be there if I had toes. And the BMP2s should be should be up, should be firing. These BMP2s should be firing. You kill this so much faster if you had four BMP2s going at it. Instead of just the infantry and the tanks. I think it's going to die anyway. But yeah, if you get a TABV to there, you should kill the Pivads. Although the, that gets side shot by the Metis, I believe. And, uh, yeah, the church tower's still still standing strong. Here we go, grads coming out now for the attack. That's good synchronization, using the grads for the attack. Uh, so, yeah, he's going for that. And he knows there's people there because he's attacking here, so why wouldn't there be? And he destroys the buildings. Um, yeah, all the RT's going. You, if you buy artillery, you want it to fire all the time. This, you can cancel because you know that guy's dead. No counter battery from either player. I'm not sure what would happen if you fired two grads at an M109. I don't know if it would kill it. I, th I actually think it might not. <laughs> but yeah, these guys need some recon. You need some recon in this push. This one Spetsar Zvedka can add so much to this. Get it to that building. And move these up. Don't forget about them. Bradley's being purchased now to fill the void. Here we go, smoke coming out. And this is still alive. Uh, this is still alive. Um, and the howitzers are still not shooting it. He's smoking it now. 
But you want to smoke in front of it, not behind it, because half of the smoke's not going to do anything. You want to smoke here. There's like spruts here as well. So the most stroke here making it. These guys are going to the resupply. This guy should be resupplied. These guys have been forgotten about. Did that Tunguska ever... Uh, yeah, it did. The Tunguska, that was back there. I think it's this one. So you need the tanks in this fight, really. Uh, but you got to watch out for the, the toes. There we go. That's being smoked. That's smart. HA's coming in. Hopefully it doesn't die. But it's just the same thing again, where it's going to be shot from three angles. This has not been killed. It's just been smoked. And, like, you've got all these howitzers, and at least some of them are now going for that Conkers. And, yeah, the BMP2s are working. This HA, you need to smoke it. This guy's about to run out of rounds, though. Is he just going to drive in and die again? <laughs> Most Rocky, doing good work here. You want the tanks fighting. You need the tanks in the fat in the fight. You need these guys in the fight because the the hit, the most Rocky are, are dying. They need their fire support. H A coming in, about to be side shot. T A B V went down, probably to the H A. It's getting hit by ten million toes and it's dead. Same as last time. Um, need infantry with A T in here to stop this from happening. Sprut's dealing really good damage to the H A's. I think this might be the last one, actually. Yeah, he's down to the one vet ones. And the Sprut's probably going to win that fight, actually. Uh, depends if it hits. And then now he's going to... Yeah, so he's bringing it in from there, but he hasn't taken control of this yet. Sprut's doing a lot of missing. Uh, but now it's being assisted by the TABVs. These guys are moving over to shoot that. And down it goes. Uh, yeah, I don't know about these howitzers. Uh, so now he's trying to smoke that off, stop him from helping, but they just drive forwards, and this is out of rounds, and this guy's trying to get in there, he's not going to make it. It's too much here. Labyrinth taking too many good trades, and he's just got way more than his opponent. Um, yeah, interesting game. Uh, these guys could use some supplies, move those up, maybe get a couple of the meta squads forwards to take these positions. Um, but yeah, I guess his main priority is getting rid of that M1A1. Oh, he's about to gain. He's about to get the lead, actually, if he stays in there long enough. Oh, but he's revealed himself to the enemy. Uh, is that Sprut still alive? No, thank God. And where's the Grad? Grad should be coming in on that corner now. They are... They are. <laughs> um, well, one is and one isn't. So the tanks can really just click Q and click over here now. There's just such an advantage for Labyrinth. He's taken so many good trades. Uh, but yeah, here we go. That guy's not going to make it. He's in the smoke. Uh, this supplied the howitzer instead of the smoke, so this guy's not got smoke. Apache is, is really... Yeah, if you're attacking like this, you need to move up your AA with it. There needs to be a Tunguskar in here at the back. Uh, because this, this Apache is going to have an absolute field day. And you can't send any planes because you got rid of your planes. F6, F15 circling as well to make sure the Apache doesn't die. It's got sack loss, so it can fire while moving with the ATGMs, so it should really be moving forwards instead of just being right-clicked on it because that's going to leave range and then it's going to mess up. But it still forces the blob back. But yeah, imagine if he'd actually microed that a bit better, would have got way more kills. This guy's coming in here now. Um, this don't neglect this line of attack and this line of defense. Like Labyrinth should have some defense here. It's been forced back a bit. Needs some supply. You need supply up uh, for these tank fights. You need supply up basically preemptively. And there's no AA. Oh no! Here we go. Tunguska's now in the blob. So that this thing's gonna die now. Um, and yeah, the blob groweth. Um, there's just too many bad trades for blue. Too many good trades for red. Let's try and summit here. Um, but yeah, no recon once again. I don't think this guy's going to get in. I think this will blow him up. If he makes it that far. No recon in this. Oh no, actually there is a recon. So where's that? Yeah, the Razvedka BMP2 should be with this because it can keep up with the tanks. Whereas the infantry can't really. And you see the tanks are exceeding it. Whereas if you got the Razvedka BMP2, there's your good optics in the blob. Um, but at this point, it's not going to matter too much. This blue's just got nothing left. Nothing left. So this guy's coming in. Probably not going to make it. Uh, even if that one doesn't kill it, this guy's going to get it. 
and there's no smoke, so it's, this is just a fool's errand, really. It's not, he knows it's not going to work. Um, just getting shot to shit, and down he goes. Meanwhile, this blob is quite content to just run into all those buildings because there's just nothing left there. Grads? What are the grads going on? Need to sell these, really? Whoops. Uh, messed that up. So the grads are going for the last buildings. Which is smart. And that's red taking uh, taking this zone. So, yeah, if you with these blobs, you always want to keep the AA with them. And honestly, I would have two Tunguskas with a blob that size because he'll focus the Tunguskas so that he can snipe the rest of the blob with air. And that's GG. So, really interesting game. Lots of artillery purchases. Uh, I'm not sure it paid for itself. When I click on Labyrinth Lover, it just comes up with me. It's not me. And Crispy's had 403 games as NATO this patch. This patch. So, I think they're all third armored. Likes is third armored. Um, yeah, 4 to 1 KD, just an overinvestment in artillery from Crispy, and um, Labyrinth keeping his cool, keeping his cool, just letting the enemy waste himself, and then finally he's got such a massive advantage that he can just walk forwards. So yeah, really interesting game, let me know what you think, and uh, yeah, I'll see you around.